Welcome to Real Estate Investing Unscripted, a podcast from Fund That Flip, where we explore some of the most creative, innovative, and inspiring stories from the real estate investor community. With expert tips and success stories you won't hear anywhere else, you'll come away with inspiration on how to improvise in the unscripted world that is real estate investing so that you can dominate your next real estate deal. Now your host, founder and CEO of Fund That Flip, Matt Rodak. All righty. Welcome everyone to this episode of Real Estate Investing Unscripted. I am your host, Matt Rodak, founder and CEO of Fund That Flip. And as always, I am super excited about our guest today. His name is uh, Brian Corkadillis. He is the founder and CEO of Design Blends, which is a fully integrated architecture design and build firm located down in Philadelphia. Welcome to the show, Brian. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, I, I got to say, full disclosure, Brian's a client. He's a good friend of Fund That Flip. I had the opportunity of, uh, of visiting uh, your guys' office. That was a couple guys a month or so ago, I guess now. But um, really cool space, doing some really cool things in the in the Philly market. So super excited to to hear about kind of how you got into the business and uh, some uh, some of the stranger things you've seen kind of in the seat that you sit. So thanks for joining us again. Um, maybe if you could just, uh, just, uh, tell us a little bit about the firm, what you guys do, how many people are working there, uh, who are you serving who are your clients? Sure. The whole rundown, if you would. Yeah. So, so, uh, you know, like I said, I'm Brian. The interesting thing, I never thought I'd actually ever be in real estate. I started in the, uh, I started in the restaurant industry, which is, which is really funny. My whole dad's side of the family is in that business. And uh, kind of started my trajectory. I, I said, I don't want to work seven days a week in the business. I want to go learn how to design, uh, Restaurants, so that kind of started my trajectory through architecture school. Uh, I have a bachelor's of architecture. I'm not licensed, but uh, you know, we kind of came up with an idea when we were in college still to service a need for small to mid-level developers uh, to help them with enterprise-level services that typically a lot of these big home builders provide to their clientele, uh, such as you know, architectural services, real estate marketing, and construction management. Um, you know, we started off by doing $200 renderings for architecture firms and developers and slowly transformed into an operation to where we're able to provide turnkey services uh, through the entire soft cost phase of development, as well as then getting into one to 10 units of construction um, on the on the GC side. So to kind of give you an example of that, you know, my architecture team in house is designing you know, single family homes, you know, sometimes even full gut renovations with third story additions, all the way up to 100 unit apartment buildings for some clients. Uh, the visualization team, the next phase, obviously, you need to pre sell, pre lease that real estate. So, my visualization team is handling projects all over the nation. We today, actually, we signed a project in Point Loma out in San Diego for yeah. 15 new houses that are going up. It's awesome. So, we're helping them. You know, with renderings, floor plans, interior renderings that help them pre-sell these beautiful homes, which compared to Philly pricing, oh my God, like <laughs> <laughs> triple triple the price. Yeah. Um, so that gives us a sense. We, we've helped market uh, resorts. Uh, we've helped market senior living facilities. You name it. We've probably done a rendering of it. And lastly, it comes to kind of our construction team in-house. Um, obviously, you know, we do our own stuff. You know, we have a little bit of money on the street with Fun That Flip, but uh, 90% of what we do at least is client based. So developers hire us as a competent GC to manage their entire process. We go pull the permits. Uh, we handle it from literally digging out the foundation, underpinning all the way to, you know, helping hand off keys to home buyers. And the magic really comes when, you know, obviously we have clients that use us a la carte. So like, you know, we have clients that already have their architect just need us to help them market and then they go build it themselves. Um, but we also have clients that come to us, hey, I just got this piece of land under agreement. What can I put here? Help me design it. Help me market it. And shit, let's hand off keys to home buyers. <laughs> so yeah. there's, you know, kind of you can use us any which way. And, you know, it keeps it fun for my staff because every client uses us differently. And uh, we're kind of just there to fill that enterprise level need. So these small to mid-level developers can compete with the Toll Brothers and K-Hobs of the world. 
So are you guys, you guys are primarily then focused your services around real estate investors. You're not doing anything for like, if I wanted to build a house for myself to live in, in Philly, like that's not really kind of what you guys are doing. It's mostly, mostly the investor, small developer kind of universe. I, li- I lit- literally just put out an Instagram post, uh, that we're building a single family home for a family of four in Maniok. So yes, we do oh, you're doing some of that too then. Okay, yep. cool. How does it is, it, is it, is that kind of like, is that kind of like a one-off, like primarily the services around? It has to be the right client. The client has to be under very understanding. You know, we've learned the hard way that, um, homeowner clients and they're very, get very emotional. So unless you're ready and at a point to be able to handle that side of it, um, we don't really, you know, focus our energy towards that. If it comes up and it's the right project and the right client, we'll definitely have a conversation. Um, but we've learned, at least at this point in our operation, that we to do what you do best. And, uh, you know, developer clients, you know, broker clients, they're, they're some of the best. And that's who we work work well with. Gotcha. So what about, uh, what about like the first time, right? So let's say I'm a, I don't know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a business professional, pick, pick whatever my day job is. Maybe I'm an attorney, maybe I'm a doctor, maybe I'm just a a business guy (laughs) and I got some money and I find a piece of property that I, that I buy right. And I've never done it before. Would it make sense for me to come to you guys and be like, Hey Brian, like, I don't really know what I'm doing. I've never done this before, but I got this deal on the property I want to build uh, two condos or a, a single family mm-hmm. home or whatever it is. Is that is that something that like you guys are focused in around too, or is it more the people that have done it before? No, that's a, that's exactly that's pretty much our ideal clients because we can help them, you know, through the entire process. You know, obviously the guys that have done it before they might have prior relationships for building. So an ideal client for us is someone just getting into it because we can literally hit every aspect for them. Got uh, it. So we want it to be successful. So. Even if they choose not to go with us to build next time, they're still going to use us for the architectural and marketing services. Got it. So, so, so we get we see a lot of first time flippers, right? That may have a great deal, but like as you know, right, the the execution of of the of the thing is where it gets can get tricky. Like you guys, you guys help de risk a lot of that. Then not only for lenders like us, but also for uh, you know for for the first timer that's going to have you know their hard earned equity in the project. It's a great it's a great mm-hmm. way to de risk it. I would I would think. Yep. And, and essentially, you know, we're able to guide them and, and, you know, my passion is actually teaching. So, you know, it's really exciting for me to watch a client that's never really done this for before and help them with their first new construction. You know, that, that's, uh, that's a lot of fun. And our team really gets a lot of joy out of that. That's really cool. So, so you talked a little bit about your family's in the restaurant business, didn't kind of want to be working the restaurant hours, got into architecture. Maybe talk to talk a little bit more about how you guys went from doing $200 renderings to having, I mean, you guys even have a wholesaling business, right? Where you're out finding <laughs> opportunities. Like how, how did it become what it is? And like, how long did it kind of take you to get, to get to where you're at? Yep. So, so just the, so, uh, just the design months piece, you know, right now we're currently at 25 people, uh, the wholesaling company, which is called Oakmont acquisitions. They're actually a sister company at ours, not owned by design months. Um, I'm a silent partner, but you know, they're very strategically aligned with us. Uh, and there's three people in that organization as well. Um, you know, what, what I realized essentially, you know, was, that there was a lack of people providing these type of services to clientele in a, in a mass way. You know, there's, there's no one you can go to that, you know, essentially could help you with your architectural drawings, give you the best designs out there and, and know what else is being built and then be able to help you actually market and sell that. It seems like a very basic concept and that it should be done, but no one was actually executing well on it. Um, and we started just kind of adding it little by little and, you know, we started with the visualization side <laughs> with these $200 renderings. We had clients that we were doing, you know, five to $10,000 marketing packages for just helping them market their real estate that they had designed by another professional. And now these clients are not only using us for the renderings, but we're also their architect. And this, this client specifically that I'm thinking of in my head is actually giving us the opportunity to bid on an upcoming project of five homes that he's building that we're designing and marketing for him. That's so it's, awesome. it's, it's kind of cool how, we've really backdoored our way into the industry through the visualization and marketing side. And then we've started kind of just layering on additional services uh, that our clients need and need help with. Um, You know, we're even looking at opening up an expediting division of our company here shortly to where we will literally be able to have people full time handling the permitting process, like 
on a daily basis, not just a once or twice a week basis that our, our architectural team handles internally. So, you know, it's like, what, what are the services that we can set up to make the ease of the development process go, you know, or the, to make the development process that much easier for our clientele. So you're, that's, you're, uh, that's what we're doing. You're just doing what every good entrepreneur does is you're listening to your customers, figuring out how you can leverage your strengths to provide services that, that, that ultimately bring value. That's, that's super cool. So obviously we're, we're a technology company. I know you guys are using some tech and even building some tech around, um, you know, getting smarter around what can be built on sites as well as mm -hmm. what are people putting into homes as finishes and making sure you're optimizing kind of sales, sales price by what, what's all end buyer going to ultimately want, right? Where, where, where are the design trends going? T talk to us a little bit about kind of like how that came to be and kind of what you guys are, are doing there. Cause I think it's, I think it's super cool. Yeah. So, you know, one of the, you know, it's a, again, back to listening to your clientele, I mean, shit, if I told you every week we get a job to the door and the client goes, what can I build here? You know, literally, if I had a $10,000 for every time a client asked that, we'd be done by now. <laughs> but but to, to be realistic, we, we started listening. We're like, well, wow, wouldn't it be nice if we could create a, a piece of software that could tell you by right what could be built in Philadelphia? And uh, that's exactly what we did. So we started developing a piece of software and very shortly here, you know, we will be releasing a beta version for people to test out and give us even more feedback on. Um, but, you know, we wanted to essentially eliminate that question from our clients. And, you know, it, it seems it seems crazy, but even, you know, so we started listening to who was saying that. And then I started looking at, well, how long have these people been doing it? And you'd be surprised that guys that have done 20 houses still need to know what can be built here to back them up. Yeah. Like they, even a single family house, well, can, what can I build here? What is going to be the square footage? How many square feet per floor? Uh, can I do 70% lot width? Is it 80%? Oh shit, it's a corner. It's 80%. Oh, now I need a checklist too, right? So we start eliminating these questions from our clients. It allows them to focus on finding more deals and to bring more deals back to us quicker so we can handle all the soft costs and, and build services for them. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, cool. So let's, uh, thanks for sharing all that. It's really, really cool. And I think it's awesome that you've built su such a successful business just by, you know, paying really close attention to what your clients are asking for and then solving it for them. It's all, it's really all business is right. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, the, that's the motto. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so as you know, the theme of the show is, is, is real estate investing unscripted. Um, you've probably seen more of it than the average investor kind of in the, in the seat that you sit in. So, I know. Give us an example, I guess, of something that's happened either to you on one of your projects or maybe one of your clients that like, no matter how much planning you did, you just couldn't have planned for this. Um, <laughs> how, how'd you work through it? Kind of what was the outcome? And then I think, um, you know, more importantly, like, would you learn from it and kind of have, have you worked that into, um, you know, how you think about flipping houses or advising your clients on how to be, how to, how to be developing homes? No, oh, that's, uh, that's a good question. Let me think. I'm going to tell you the story of our first uh, renovation. So we did our first renovation. We bought a house for $38,000 up in Easton, PA. So if you're not familiar where Easton is, it's north of Philadelphia. Literally, you can take 611 all the way up, or it's right all. It's the first exit on Route 78 when you get in the PA coming out of New York and through Jersey. Uh huh. So I think Route 78 runs you all the way to Manhattan. Okay. Um, so decent area, blue collar area. You know, we we were like, oh, this would be great. We can sell the house. You know, 140, 150. You know, we're gonna need. Oh shit, it needs 60 thousand in work. You know, wow, the spread's there. We'll make some money. Great. So. <laughs> Um, your, our first flip, obviously, you know, we were still just getting started. And if I tell you, we maybe had an employee at the time with uh, some of the other directors, you know, that, that might be stretching it. <laughs> I think actually Mike, our director of construction now, who's handling 5 million in construction was still working part-time, you know, working full-time and working part-time at design months at the time. So this just tells you how far back it was. Early days, uh, early days, early, early, <laughs> early days, 2013, 2014, early days. Um, so we bought the house, you know, we start getting into it. Um, one of the first problems, well, I, I'm not going to go into, I'm just going to kind of go in order of my head. One of the issues we ran into, and 
I was later notified by Easton officials that this is one out of four houses in the entire city of Easton where this is an issue. <laughs> the, the originally back here, back you know before I was born, the, the property was actually split in half. So there was a house in the front and a house in the back. And I guess they had subdivided the house in the back off and someone was living there. But that house was actually originally like the garage of this house or the barn or whatever it was of this original house. And they had, someone had you know slightly renovated it at some point and made it into a living unit. Well, slight issue was there was still plumbing from that house that existed in my house that I bought. And I didn't know it. And you can probably imagine what plumbing existed in my house. You have water lines and you have shit lines. <laughs> Both of them ran through my basement. They were running from that. So was that still a, was that like still a house back there? Like people were living in that other house? Separate property, oh, divide, subdivided, and there was a there was some sort of easement agreement that my title company didn't find oh, during geez. the due diligence. So get, and this was like at the end of the property, you're like, what the hell is clogging? You know, as we're like fit, going through finishes, like shit, you know, oh my God, plumbing is backing up in the basement. What the hell? Come to find out, we know it's literally a shit pipe from the property behind us. <laughs> it's flooding my basement that we're trying to finish. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> so we obviously, it could be, could we open it up this, you know, we, do we retrench it to the street? We're looking at options like Jesus Christ, you know, it's, it's like, all right, we're just going to leave it and, and notify it on the deed. But we had to end up getting it like cleaned out, clogged, but it, it was, it was just like an unforeseen issue that you never would have expected or run into. Um, that's another, wild. That's wild. Right. So, all right, great. That's one of them. The other issue, and I now run, you know, we <laughs> background checks are a real thing and I recommend you run them on people. Um, but when your GC is constantly being driven around by somebody else and you have no, you know, you don't even think anything of it. Um, you know, Oh, this is my guy. You know, he's my, he's my project manager. He's driving and, and your contractor is sitting in the right seat. You know, now I look back and I laugh. I'm like, there's no way if I was a head GC, I'd be letting that guy drive for me. I'd be driving the truck. <laughs> um, but yeah, a convicted felon I had hired, first one to be the GC of the project. You know, he was trying to, you know, and, and fortunately the program I, I joined to the houses helped me a little bit, helped back me. But like, oh, come on, I need 5000 more dollars. We're going to have this done. You know, tries to start doing certain areas of the house to get a little bit of money, but essentially he never was really finishing things on time or finishing what he said he was going to finish and ended up finding out, yeah, he was a felon and he didn't have a license to actually drive. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah. So fired him, had to hire new guys. I literally had contractors claiming that they were going to file liens on my property because this guy didn't pay them. So me being a new investor, like, oh my God, well, let's work something out. I'm not realizing that these guys are trying to double dip on me because I had already paid the contractor for work that they have done. Oh, and then co come to find out like the HVAC system wasn't done properly. I had to repay for that. Um, you know, it was just issue after issue after issue of just like being a new investor and not necessarily, you know, really dive, really diving in and fully understanding and not to mention I'm doing this like part time while trying to grow out other entities of, of the organization. So it was like, it, it was, and it was an hour from my house. So I'm trusting that these guys I was hiring knew, knew what the hell they were doing. But, you know, my, my horror story didn't go as bad as other people's. You know, at the end of the project, we still pretty much broke even. We didn't lose. We made a few thousand dollars, ended up selling the property for 155 grand. But I paid contractors twice and three times in some instances to redo portions of the property. Jeez. So, well, it's good, it's good you, didn't, it's you didn't lose money. We always tell people don't try to necessarily like hit a home run on your first one. Just try to like learn a lot. It sounds like it sounds like you accomplished that. So, so, so there you go. Oh, I, I tell people everything <laughs> that went wrong could have gone wrong on my yeah. first project. East Coast old housing always has so many interesting <laughs> like weird stuff with title. So so that's first lesson learned is like look at the property, other properties situated near the property. And is there any potential that like, there could be something weird going on? Second is uh, due diligence, your, your contractors, background oh, checks. Yeah. yeah. Makes a lot Referral. of sense. I never got, I got a reference from a lady that it could have been his mother for all I know. 
Right. You know, it right. wasn't like I should have had two or three references and had conversations on the phone with these people, not just via email. You know, there's a, right. it's a lot of lessons when I look back, I could have, could have saved myself a little bit, but you could, have, learn. <laughs> could have been, could have been worse as they say. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. Cool. So, uh, great story. So, so where do you guys go from, where, where are you going? Right. Design blends up to 20 plus people, almost 30 people. Sounds like you guys are, are, are adding a lot of value for your clients. Where do you want to, where do you, you see design blends being in the next two to three, four years? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're definitely, um, planning on jumping cities, you know, not leaving Philadelphia, but expanding, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we're looking at DC as the market, Chicago as a market, North Jersey, New York market. Um, but we know that if we can get it right in Philadelphia, we can take this to any any other city in the U.S. You know, when I look at it, when I look at a standpoint of a rendering for a four hundred fifty thousand dollar house, but the same house is going for eight hundred thousand dollars in Chicago, or an eight hundred thousand dollar house here is going for one point two in Chicago, I know that there is a lot of opportunity. And then I look and see what other people are doing, and there's not a lot. There's not a there's not a company that offers uh, small to mid level services like we do in those cities. And there's all the pieces, but there's not someone that holistically puts it together properly. So we know that we're going to take our processes, our systems we built and drop them in other cities when the time's right. And Got it. for sure, three to four years, uh, that's, that's definitely happening. It makes sense. And I can tell you from where we sit and we see a lot of, uh, a lot of this type of, of activity, at least on the, the buy, fix and sell perspective we we've yet to run into a firm that's as full service as you guys are so that's that's cool and look forward to uh to seeing that that growth so let's wrap it with this brian listen if any listeners out there want to get a hold of you what um what type of investor i guess probably at least right now specifically to philadelphia what, what type of investor i guess is best suited for you how do they get a hold of you yeah just ha- how, how can how can someone hunt you down if they want to find you you know, if you're building real estate in Philadelphia, you know, you should at least have a conversation with us at some point. You know, I know whether we're not going to be your builder, architect or visualization person, you know, there's some value that we could provide you, whether it's a referral or, you know, a connection to, you know, you know, every, I, one of the questions I was going to ask, like, what lawyer do you recommend? Uh, we've worked with most of them. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you can guide all of them. on your project, right? <laughs> there's, I, I, you know, just providing you knowledge at any point, you know, working with us is great, but, uh, you know, from one to a hundred units. Yeah, we can definitely help you out. And, uh, you can definitely visit our website at designblends.com with a Z. <laughs> and, uh, if you want to reach out to me directly, uh, you can email me at Brian at designblends.com and text me. But you know, if you email me, I'll, I'll I always check it. So I get through it by the end of the week <laughs> for sure. Awesome. So my, my takeaways here and I appreciate you for, for sharing Due diligence your projects, due diligence your contractors, and, and most importantly, and I don't think I think this applies to all businesses, no matter what kind of business you're trying to build. Get out, talk to your clients, listen to their needs, figure out if you're uniquely positioned to to to, to serve them and, and solve a problem, and and good things will happen. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Listen, uh, appreciate appreciate your time, Brian. This was great. Thanks so much. And thank you all out there for listening to this episode of Real Estate Investing Unscripted. If you want to get a hold of Brian, it's brian at designblends.com. For other great resources or to get funding for your next project, uh, head on over to fundthatflip.com. Otherwise, look forward to, uh, to, to having you here on the show next time. Your host, Matt Rodak, signing off. <laughs>